of these sections of time in this time prophecy center in Jesus Christ. The first part that you see up here is from the decree to Jesus uh, taking the gospel and giving it to all the world, not to these chosen people alone. <coughs> it centers on Jesus. But the second part centers on him as well because he's bringing it all to a conclusion. Jesus is in control of this world. His work is to bring in pardon and forgiveness. The other section tells us that if his intercessory work in the most holy place of heaven's sanctuary for you and for me. Jesus is doing a special work right now. He's got something he's doing for us. Jesus is not just sitting there up on the throne eating bonbons and grapes. Jesus is working on our behalf. He went to heaven to complete the work. He didn't need to finish the work of his salvation in terms of what was done on the cross. But the work that needed to be done is in us. He is helping us to understand what he's doing to prepare us for the return when he is coming back very, very soon. According to this prophecy, we are living in a unique time in Earth's history when the destinies of the human race are being settled. Every single person in the universe. God gave John a vision of the judgment hour in Revelation. He portrays it as a time when an urgent message proclaimed by an angel flying swiftly through the sky saying to every nation under heaven, Fear God and give glory to Him. For the hour of His judgment has come. John says in Revelation, this is a special hour of Earth's history. It is the call to understand we are living in the judgment hour. But there is still good news. Because this is a call for us to give our hearts and our minds and our lives to God. This is a call to be cleansed in my heart and in you to be cleansed in your heart. It is a call to say, Jesus, I need you. Jesus doesn't tell us this information to scare us. He tells us this information so that we can be ready when He comes. If we look at our good works, our good deeds, we might think we've already earned a spot in God's holy heaven. But I've got news for you. You and me, I need to be reminded we may think we're not so bad by the way we look compared to other people, but the Bible makes it clear to us that we may feel good about it, but sin is a problem for all of us. Amen. And that if without Jesus, we are not delivered from sin. How would you feel if you were called to stand before the judgment seat of God today? Would you have confidence in Jesus? Have you always been kind and loving to your family? Have you always spoken the truth? Have you never spoken or gossip? Never taken something that belonged to someone else? Never envied the rich and coveted their luxuries? Do you have confidence? Do you have confidence today that Jesus is your Savior and that He will defend you? Here's the good news. And here's where Numbers 24, 17 is. My little children, these things I write to you so that you may not sin. That's not the right verse either. It's 1 John chapter 1, verse 9. I'm sorry. And follow it. I don't know how that got up there. But anyway, my little children, these things I write to you so that you may not sin. You can have confidence today because the judge, the jury, and all is Jesus Christ. Amen. And the Father who loved you so much to send His Son here to die for you. You've got the judge on your side. It's not his, only His birthday. It is His birthright. The people that He created, He wants to save not destroy. So he says, my little children, these things I write to you that you do not sin. But if anyone sins, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ, the righteousness. And he himself is the propitiation for our sins and not for our sins only, but also for the whole world. When your appointment with the King of the universe comes on that final day of reckoning, you don't need to tremble in fear because you are holding on to the hand of Jesus Christ. Christ offers you a full 
pardon. Amen? Amen. I want to conclude with a story. Friedrich Wilhelm, or William Herschel, grew up in Germany many years ago as a talented young man. But like so many young men in history drafted into the army, one night in a terrible battle that overwhelmed him with terror, he fled the battlefield. He managed to get home. His father sent him to England, and there he changed his name to William. He studied astronomy, and he built a telescope. Not just any telescope, it made him famous. And with that telescope, he discovered a new planet, and he became even more famous. The King of England sent for William one day to appear before him. And now, William was afraid. Because you see, the king's grandfather, George II, was the one who ruled Germany when William deserted the army. William was sure that now he would be recognized as deserter and sentenced to death. As he waited to see the king, a servant approached him and gave him an envelope. I don't know about you, but William was scared to open that envelope. With trembling hands, he opened it, expecting to find that his long-awaited sentence of death for deserting the army was found in that envelope. But instead, the King of England had written out for him a full and complete pardon. Praise the Lord. The King of the universe has done the same thing for you and me. That's what he's doing in heaven right now. He is pleading with you and me to listen to what he's asking us to do. And that is simply to be fully and completely surrendered to him. Amen. He lifts his hands and he says, when our name comes up, he said, this man is my man. This woman is my woman. I have accepted them because they have surrendered their life to me. They've asked for forgiveness and they have no other choice but to be surrendered to me and I can give it to them. A full and complete pardon. That's what Jesus is doing right now. Yes. That judgment goes on until Jesus returns. And when he returns, it's all over. Amen. And you and I can make that choice today. Many of you made that choice last night. You surrendered your life to Christ. Some of you for the first time. Some of you surrendered your life again and realized you'd wandered away from God. Some of you also said, look, I made a decision when I left home yesterday, Friday morning, and I, you want you renewed your commitment to Jesus Christ. But you and I need to renew that commitment to Jesus every day. Amen. Why? Because He loves us. He's holding His hands out to us. And He's saying, I don't want you to be afraid of the judgment. Yes, the judgment is coming. It's real. It's going to be uh, your day in court. But with me, you've got nothing to worry about. Amen. He's the author of our faith. He began a good work in us. He's also the finisher of our faith. Yeah. He is interceding for you. His arms are outstretched to you tonight. Jesus longs to represent to you, or to, I'm sorry, to represent you before the Father in heaven. He loves you. He died for you. And He is the one whose righteousness stands in your place. Amen. So if you haven't given your heart to Jesus, I want you to know that this Easter weekend is a reminder of what Jesus did for you. It's what He did for me. It's what He did for the entire world. He wants everyone to be ready when He comes. Jesus died on the cross that we might live forever. He lives today that He can help us to get ready. He's promised to give us that strength to live for Him as children of His. All you have to do is simply say to Him, I have a sense tonight as I never did before, that we are living in a special time in the history of this world. And so, God, I'm asking you to simply write
pardon after my name because I want to surrender my life to you. Do you want to do that tonight and say, Lord, I want you to have my life. I want you to write pardon by my name. I want to be ready when you come. That's all I have to do. Yes, that's all I have to do. God sees your heart. He knows what you want for Him. And that is what He's planning for you. He says in Revelation chapter 20, Two, behold, I'm coming quickly, and my reward is with me to give everyone according to his work. And he's coming again very, very, very soon. I'd like you to listen to the words that are sung by Patty. Patty, i got to tell a little secret about you tonight. I've been waiting a long time to do this. I want you to know that. But my wife and I started ministry a few years ago. We won't tell how long ago. We'll we started ministry a long time ago. And in that time in Pontiac, Michigan, I was a young associate pastor of the church. And Patty was part of the youth group. We were part of a youth group together, weren't we? Young people, young adults or something like that. Juniors? Yes. And the juniors? What's that? Juniors. No, not juniors, not that young. No, but anyway, we were we were young adults together, and we had a Bible study time together. So I want you to know that there's some people in this church that I go back a long way with, and they still are willing to help us out. So, Patty, would you please sing that song for us tonight? Reminding us of God's tremendous love for us, and think about these words and what Jesus wants to do for you when He comes. <coughs>
Well, you may stand up and you're dismissed.